are you a lesbian? You are dumb. You are, I'm dumb? You are dumb. I'm dumb? You're saying meaningful, hateful things to me. You call me fat, you tell me I have a small... So as you just saw in that intro, this is definitely bar none, the most toxic episode of 90 Day Fiance that I have ever seen involving Big Ed. The fight continues from their engagement party where he accuses Liz of, I don't know, liking women or anybody else but him, accused her of cheating at their engagement party, and now she has thrown away his $13,000 ring in some bush on the way home from the restaurant, and the fight continues. So let's get into it. Make sure you drop a like if you enjoy this series, and make sure you watch until the end of this one because it's all freaking insane. Liz's ex co-worker showed up at the engagement party and I'm convinced that she liked Liz in more of a romantic way. So we just heard it from Ed's mouth, just catching you all up on what this fight is about. Somebody showed up to their engagement party that was an ex-co-worker of Liz's that Ed apparently knows also likes women. Um, and he accused this co-worker and Liz of having a secret relationship that she has never told him about. And apparently Liz invited this ex of hers to their engagement party so they can specifically cheat in front of him. I don't know who the hell would do that in their right mind, let alone when cameras are there, but that is definitely not the freaking case. And Ed is just an insecure jerk in this scenario, but let's see him continue to double down on the idea that Liz is going to leave him for another woman or for a woman, I should say. <laughs> and she's out walking with God knows who, maybe by herself. I have no idea. I don't know if I'm more upset or more worried about where Liz is. And it's funny, Ed says he doesn't know if he's more worried or upset. We already know the freaking answer to that. Last episode, he instantly calls Liz as she's storming away, literally running away from this restaurant where they had their engagement party. And he is like already talking down to her. Like you ruin everything. You are literally so, you are just so mischievous. You're over here cheating on me left and right. You have no faith to me. You hate my guts. And you're the one that caused this party to be terrible. Your grandparents are ashamed of you. Your entire family hates your guts now. Like obviously you weren't very worried for her safety if you're just screaming at her the first chance you get. And thankfully, the producers finally get Liz to hop in the freaking van so they can drive her to the house. I'm pretty sure the restaurant is close to where Ed lives, but still, you don't want to be walking around alone, especially while you're in this emotional state. So it's good they hauled her up to the house. Now it's time for her to get back to the house, and I'm pretty sure this is where the fireworks start. So let's get into it. I would do anything for that man. And you know what? I threw my wedding ring and grass and it's gone it's gone <laughs> Actually, first, we're going to get this realization from Liz as she's bawling her eyes out more in the car. I'm not laughing at the fact that she's crying here. Obviously, it's a very sad situation, but it's just funny to see her come to the realization of like, oh, yeah, I, I kind of in anger just literally took off this ring that is worth over $13,000, according to Ed. So we don't know if that's true. Could be cubic zirconium for all we know. But she took it off and chucked it in the bush. And <laughs> I'm really hoping the producers either picked it up while she wasn't looking or kept a mental note of where the hell that bush was located. Because again, like I said last episode, if not, somebody in the city where Ed's from, somewhere in Southern California, needs to go find this freaking ring, all right? It's a piece of history at this point. Because maybe I go back with your grandma and Whatever. You got jealous. And so now I just want to have this go through your mind here. They just had this massive fight. Obviously, things are tense. Liz has spent the last, I don't know, hour, couple hours walking home slash driving home, bawling her eyes out. And as soon as she gets inside the house, Big Ed is already there. He begins to antagonize her again by saying, hey, I think you need to move out immediately. Go back to your grandparents because they're the only ones that have ever taken care of you in your life besides me. And I'm just going to lord over this whole living situation over your head anytime we get into a fight because that's the only power I have in my wimp life. That was Ed talking, obviously, but that literally is his strat here. Liz, she was a lesbian that you were in a relationship with. She got physical with you. When? And you denied it. You, when? You tell me. Not only having a relationship with them, Liz, but also having a relationship with them behind Ed's back and being dumb enough to invite them to your engagement party and then also being dumb enough to physically cheat on Ed in front of his face. Obviously, again, that is not the case, but that is what Ed is imagining went on here. How stupid do you think Liz could be? Obviously, she's going to cheat on you, which hopefully she is at this point. <laughs> I would never wish that upon anybody except for Big Ed, to be completely honest, but hopefully she is and it's behind his back like a actual smart person, not somebody who's like, hey, uh, you know, we got this little side thing going on. Why don't you show up to my engagement party? I'm sure everyone will be lit anyways. Nobody will notice if we just mack on each other a little bit. Like, nobody's freaking doing that, moron. You think I'm having a relationship with someone? You did in the past. No. But it's when we split up, you Matt. men and women. 
And this is a very weird topic from Ed, and one that, again, makes me think he has some underlying issues with people who are gay. So just to be flat out and honest with you guys, the way that he is saying this is like it's a bad thing that when they broke up, Liz was possibly pursuing men and women. Okay, she's bisexual, so what? How does that affect you? The reason Ed finds this such an issue is because he already has the entire pool of men to fight over when it comes to women, and he already realizes he's very near the bottom of that food chain. And then when you add in all these gorgeous women of the world, you have now the entire population above you physically that looks better than you for the most part, Ed. And that's why he's so insecure. <laughs> and again, I would never go against anybody's looks unless there's somebody like Ed who truly deserves it. This guy is not a good guy, and this fight just proves it. What the hell does it matter who she pursued after you guys broke up? You broke up, might I add, for the eighth time in like a year. So obviously she didn't really care about your feelings at that point. I just can't trust you. Listen. Are you a lesbian? And Liz, for the thousandth time, has to confirm she has no physical attraction to women. She only likes men, and shockingly, men that look like Big Ed, apparently. But no, she is not a lesbian or bisexual or whatever Ed wants to spin this into. He literally was reading into something that doesn't exist because he's such an insecure bag of filth, just a human slug, like I always say, and he's taking it out on her because he is so insecure. It's just sad that he's cornering her like this and treating it like it's something that would be so majorly wrong if she was bisexual. Period. Thank you, Liz. I knew I was speaking facts there, but I needed some reassurance. Anyways, let's keep going. But the fact that you don't even come to bed anymore, you don't give a about me. You can stay up to 5 a.m. You don't come to bed. You don't cuddle with me. And now Liz is even proving that this guy isn't even showing up to their relationship all that much. I mean, it sounds like there is not much love between these two, so it's insane they continue to pursue this trashy relationship that is literally just making everybody else in the world angry, including all their closest friends and family. Liz, you're the one that got upset and walked away from the restaurant, left me stranded, you too much, and you you just walk, start walking home. And the way that Ed spins this, he, he totally changes the history of the night. He is the one that brought this up out of nowhere, ruining the vibe and accusing Liz at her own engagement party of cheating on him. And then he's like, you're the one that freaking stormed off and ruined the entire evening. You are literally a mess. I don't know what to do with you and it's dangerous to be walking out alone. Why would you go do that? Like, dude, what other choice did you give her? Literally accusing somebody of something like that at a moment like that, especially when they're partying and hanging out with their family and friends, having a good time. Obviously they're gonna react negatively to that, you freaking moron. Why do you hang out with people you shouldn't hang out with? I'm not hanging out with anybody, because oh, you know what? You don't let me hang out with anybody. Because they're all trashy. And I mean, every single time Ed opens his mouth, you can see this the true disdain he has for Liz. Again, this age gap has a lot to do with it, but he seems to hate every single person that was in her life before him, which is a major freaking red flag. All right, I don't care if you maybe dislike a couple of your significant other's friends, but to block them from seeing their family and friends to the point where you are in your relationship for a couple years now, and you're, you know, her grandparents and everybody and her close friends are just meeting Ed for the first time, that is a major freaking red flag. And the fact that he doesn't let her do anything outside of go to the gym without being monitored. I don't know why she's staying in this freaking relationship. It's giving me a, more of a headache than I already had today. You've been single for 29 years and I'm still teaching you how to kiss. You don't know anything. Liz, you're just mean. You're just mean. I mean? <laughs> yes, Liz. Going in right now, literally tearing Ed a new one. And his only defense is to turn into the victim here and being like, oh my gosh, you're mean. Why would you say that? You're mean. Like, obviously I've been egging you on the entire night. And as soon as you walk into this house, even though we haven't spoken in a couple minutes, you know, after our last fight, I instantly started this new fight again. But why are you fighting with me now? Like, literally, what happened? Like, dude, the gaslighting is real with this guy. He's so manipulative. It's just entirely disgusting. You're saying mean hateful things to me. You call me fat, you tell me I have a small whatever. Because you, you call me fat. I never called you fat. You, yes, you did. Thank you, Liz. Oh my God, that is the biggest issue I have with this season so far. Also, a little side note, I love that she says he has a small one and that's like apparently an insult. She gives him a lot because he wouldn't bring it up otherwise. Freaking hilarious, by the way, confirmed. Not that any of us had any questions about it. <laughs> you know, it's probably hiding close to his body just like his head is. But yeah, it's ridiculous that Ed even has the balls to say that Liz is gaining weight or complaining about it when, I mean, last season, wasn't he in the gym with his daughter trying to get, you know, healthy and everything? And now he looks fatter than he ever has. Like, I'm sorry to say it, but this dude is just not healthy. He's overweight himself. He has no freaking leg to stand on here. All I said was this. 
It makes no sense to go to the gym and then go to 7-Eleven and eat nachos. I don't eat nachos. Yes, you do. No, literally. He projects so freaking hard. Literally, she could go to the gym for three hours and then just her choice of food afterwards will completely derail that in his mind. And he'll be like, wow, she doesn't care about her body or improving or, you know, wanting to look good for me. Why am I even in this relationship? Meanwhile, he's just eating like a pig, you know, probably not working out at all. Let's be real. It's just hilarious. And I also eat pie, and I have, a, I have a sweet tooth. I'm overweight, too. Am I overweight, Ed? Why are you using the Am I overweight? The way he tries to derail this everywhere. He's like, why are you cussing at me? He's also cussing, by the way. And then also, he's like, I am overweight, too. This is not an even playing field. You can't just lump you and Liz together and be like, hey, we're both unhealthy. We're both overweight. Obviously, you're at two different degrees of being overweight. I would say you're obese, Ed. And Liz, while she has put on a few pounds since starting this show, probably dealing with the stress of being in a relationship with you, is nowhere near as unhealthy as you currently are. So shut the hell up, Ed. Please, for everybody's sake. I've never called this fat. I'll drop positive hints, and I know I have to work on myself too, but I've never called her fat. And in his eyes, these are just positive hints. In everybody else's eyes, it's just rude comments that he does to dig at her personality and make sure that she remains as insecure as she possibly can be so that he has the best chance of sticking with her. That's what this goes down to. If she were to lose weight and start being on her hot girl stuff, she would instantly lose Ed and, and it would be the best thing ever. She probably could have a much better life without him, a much healthier life, and he realizes that. So as long as he keeps her unhealthy and angry with herself, she won't really realize how much of a pig she's actually dating. Why do you call me fat? Why do you make me insecure? Why, Ed? I'm not, I'm not, shut up, I'm not done talking. I'm done with you speaking over me. Let's freaking go, dude. Oh my God, this is amazing. This is like seeing those like, you know, kid stands up to bully compilations on YouTube. You just wanna see this happen. You wanna see the bully get taken down. And, and Ed has been the freaking bully throughout this entire series. So I'm glad, I mean, obviously it took her some, you know, other ways of getting courage tonight, but I'm glad Liz is finally speaking her freaking mind and telling him to shut the hell up and and stop gaslighting her and try to manipulate her at every corner. It's so evident what he's doing and it's just despicable. Everybody told me she's gonna, if you stay with her, you're gonna be miserable for the rest of your life. This is all of my decision. This is all of my choice. And now he's over here fiddling with his jewelry. The fight has at least calmed down a little bit. I don't know, Liz went to go to the bathroom or something. And now Ed is just sitting here uh, contemplating everything he's lost as a result of this relationship, acting as if he's been the one fighting so hard to make it work when he's been the one to cause the problems. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this man has no accountability for his own actions. You'd think he's five years old just by the way he talks, but instead he's 10 times that. It's crazy. I can't have any of my girlfriends. All of my friends are women. I'm not going to apologize. All for of that. my friends are men, and you don't like that. And now, oh my God, I I am going to have a freaking aneurysm here. I don't know if you guys can tell how heated I've been throughout this entire voiceover, but I am getting freaking heated. This man then twists it and is like, actually, I have a ton of female girlfriends. Like pretty much all my friends are girls, and I don't get to talk to any of them anymore because Liz is so insecure that she thinks I'm cheating. <gasps> I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. Like everything he's accusing her of, he is the one that actually does, literally. And also, I don't believe that. I don't think you really had any friends, Ed, besides, you know, maybe Rich, who was just somebody who you met as a child. But anybody who would meet you in this adult phase who actually gets to know the real Big Ed would not want to be your friend. I'm sorry. I sure as hell wouldn't. All of my friends are men, and you don't like that. No, they're not. Most of them are gay women, most of them. Am I gay? I don't know. Am you I gay? Me. So then Liz is like, wait, I have guy friends that I can't hang out with. Why is that? And Ed twists it once again. Listen to this tone of the way he says this. He's like, no, actually, you have friends that are all women and they happen to be lesbian women. <laughs> like, this is some terrible thing. Dude, Ed, I know you're an old guy. I know you're a bit of a boomer yourself, like for the most part. You might as well be lumped in with the rest of those freaking old people. But you can't be this ignorant and you can't be this big of a loser, man. You are literally so insecure that you're demolishing your entire relationship with a woman who is 10 times out of your league and a quarter of your age and you are fumbling the bag right now due to your own insecurities that you just can't seem to get over no matter how much quote therapy you say you're taking which is funny he says he's taking therapy i know they should have a lot of this stuff be private but we haven't seen a portion of that at all on this show so it leads me to believe that he's either not doing therapy anymore or he was lying about that just to get sympathy on the tell-all last season at this point liz i do not know i think you are bisexual there's been too many coincidences 
with you. <laughs> and again, what the hell does it have to do with anything, Ed? If she likes you, she likes you. Obviously, she's not liking you very much right now. And I gotta say, I don't think someone's behavior could change someone's sexuality. But if it could, Ed's behavior right here is probably the closest you could get to turning someone straight to gay. Because they would be like, okay, if this is how men act, I don't want to have anything to do with them because they're all freaking morons. Like, imagine if every single man acted like Big Ed. I don't think anybody would reproduce on this earth anymore because nobody would be getting any because all of their personalities would be so trash. I don't know where these accusations are coming from because Ed's completely in control. I have a curfew. Dude, she has a curfew. If this isn't a manipulative relationship i don't know what is dude you literally don't have a curfew in a normal adult relationship okay he sees you as his child for the most part that he is just way too overprotective of and there's so many layers of this relationship that have gone wrong but it is just insane to be privy to it all like we are seeing a truly toxic relationship unfold on this show you know what you don't know Listen, what I independence don't, I don't, is i don't want that i don't want somebody like you I don't want that. You don't want someone. I don't want somebody that I have to worry about. Someone. And more just looking down on Liz by Ed. Dude, if you're so over this relationship, then fully break up, please. You are the one that also wants to be in this relationship so bad because when you go out in public and you're seen with somebody like Liz, it makes you feel better about your aging self. But now that you don't have that validation all the time because you've gotten used to being with Liz and you consider her to be some, you know, lesbian who's put on a bunch of weight that just doesn't love you anymore, he's ready to throw her away and is like, you know what? You shouldn't live here anymore. Either be home homeless or moving with your grandparents again. Peace out. Where's the $13,000 ring I bought you? Where's that at? Probably in a bush. <laughs> so now Liz uh, explains to Ed what happened to the ring because he can obviously see it's not on her finger anymore. Uh, I want to know how he reacts to this because he has made a very big deal throughout this entire series since he bought her the ring that he spent $13,000 on this ring like some freaking moron. I'm sorry, you should never spend $13,000 on a ring unless you really, really got it like that. Even then it's wasteful. But let's see how Big Ed reacts to this earth shattering news. You threw a $13,000 ring in a bush. You're, you are dumb. You are, I'm dumb. You are dumb. I'm dumb. <laughs> so he says, dude, you are dumb, which it is pretty stupid of her to do that. But obviously she's emotional and not in the right state of mind tonight. But then he twists it and is like, you could have used that to, you know, pawn it and make some money for yourself to find a place to live and to help out your grandparents after I break up with your ass and you're poor again. Like this dude literally sees everything in financial terms. Like this entire relationship is transactional for him. It's so obvious. So you want me to pawn the ring? Well, I would rather you do that than throw it in a bush. I don't need your money. You're not getting anything. You're out of my life. And things are looking dire here. I mean, I know there's a few more episodes this season, but I have no idea what the hell is going to be happening from this point forward because it seems like Ed is pretty done. And it's hilarious to think that it wasn't all the fights that caused it. It's him confirming the fact that Liz threw away this ring. And as soon as there's a monetary, like, you know, hit to him in this relationship, he's like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm over this. Move out. So the night ends with them fighting as Liz backs up to the room to fall asleep, possibly for the last time in this house. Although we all know that's not going to be the case. Even a fight like this, I feel like they're going to come back from and still get married at the end of the season. And that really hurts my soul. But I want to know what you guys think of this episode down in the comments below. My heart is still racing at this point. I need to go take a break, get some fresh air, take a breather. Let me know what you thought. Shout out to my patrons for supporting me over there. I hope you all have an incredible start to your December. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.